Hello, everybody. Welcome to Celebrate Southern Africa. My name is Dawn Denton, and today I have the fabulous Rory Berry. What a fabulous name, Rory. It just rolls off your tongue. Thank you very much. And the Oscar goes to Rory Berry. <laughs> Or like in Australia, where um, one of the, was it like a Miss Australia competition? They read the wrong name out. So the guy goes, um, the prize goes to Dawn Denton. And then, they, then someone leans over and they go, oh, no, sorry, it's to Susie Jones. Can you imagine? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Scary stuff for presenters. <laughs> so welcome to the chat. I think this is so great for us to finally chat and about what you do, but also to share what you do with, with people because the work that you, you do is, is transformational. Um, and simply because I believe that stories are what makes the world go round. Isn't that the case? I 2,850% agree with that. Um, anyway, thanks very much for joining us. That was it. It was lovely, <laughs> great, thanks, bye. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so tell us the power of stories yes absolutely i so a, a brief history in time as to how i arrived where i am sitting right now i almost became an accountant nothing against accountants they're lovely people i have a lovely accountant myself she's awesome uh ended up via the marketing and advertising industry playing at summer camp in the states and then 10 years in the performing arts where i did improvised theater for eight of them and so story became a large part of who we are and what we did, because when you've got nothing else, you literally cling to the story and then you create it along the way. And I then met my now wife and I realized I love my parents, but I didn't want to live with them. So I needed to have money. As a result, I moved into the corporate space and started teaching people how to tell their stories amongst other things. Fantastic. So in what circumstances do stories apply? Everyone has a story and a story can be everywhere. It doesn't matter how insignificant you think something is, a story is absolutely something that can be part of it. The most boring PowerPoint in the world can be invigorated with a story. Story was how information was passed from generation to generation, way back before we had massively excitable things like Google and phones, that was, <laughs> <laughs> and phones that we could get all the information from. And so people used to go to the places where they could get the stories to get the knowledge to pass it on. Stories is also the thing that helps us to inspire and encourage and motivate other people that potentially are struggling and or suffering with stuff. Obviously we've had I'm going to say it, uh, apologies in advance, unprecedented times <laughs> over the last year and a bit. And story is what has helped us in so many cases make it through. Sharing the stories, sharing the truths and the honest truths that people maybe three, four years ago weren't sharing in their stories. And you see it on all of the social platforms. People are being more honest with their stories. So it's no longer mm -hmm. like, I'm always awesome. Things are awesome. My business is awesome. Now there's like, guys, I'm having a bit of a rough day. And yeah. so they're sharing truthful stories, which is so important. And I think it's what's giving us a unique opportunity. And I think we're getting it right in some cases to put the human back into humanity. Oh, I love that. The human back into humanity. Um, but so I often think that people who've had a tough time and come out the other side have a great story because that's inspiring. You know, that's like, wow, you've been amazing and you can teach other people uh, or show them, not teach them, but show them that it's possible to get through that struggle because they've had it. And if you've got it, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I often wonder if you haven't had that trauma, how then do you find stories that inspire? It's a good question, but I think... Thank you. <laughs> I think that for me, your story, when you tell it, be it a sort of epic tale of overcoming or achieving or whatever, 
there's always going to be somebody that needs to hear your story at their point in their journey and it'll resonate with them and give them the fuel the encouragement the excitement the pick me up that they need at that time so somebody that's having a rough time might want to hear a story of overcoming somebody that's charging after a dream that thinks it's impossible and having a story from somebody that's achieved something whether or not they had to go through the trials or not but they've achieved for them that'll be the pick me up that they need and so i think as i mean the the classic tedx thing is what stories were sharing everyone's got a story within them and your story while beautifully powerful for you will encourage motivate and, ins and or inspire someone somewhere on their journey and i think it's also understanding that your story no matter what it is will impact somebody because you know people will often say but i mean why would anyone care what i have to say or what i've been through i mean that's just all about me then and it doesn't become about them or it doesn't become about the product or the service that they're delivering or the talk they're doing or the you know sitting in a boardroom yeah absolutely i think I mean, there's that classic Marianne Williamson quote, which people often attribute to um, Mr. Mr. Nelson about yeah. our greatest power is. And I think that that talks about obviously the light within and our light encourages other people, et cetera, et cetera. But it's the same with our stories. I think some of the most powerful and beautiful and deeply like moving stories for me have never have not been necessarily about famous guy who starts up in a cupboard and buys an island via an airline um oh my goodness me that sounds like a great story you should make that yours i'll do that um <laughs> watch this space um island bought in 2023 um, you should call it necker necker island that's a great name Mm. Mm. but so yes it's wonderful to have people that have got that level of like oorah but little man from down the road who crafts beautiful wooden things and has deep meaning that he attaches to them and sells them at the local market which is only ever frequented by people in his town can have as much of an impact possibly even more of an impact on people around him with his story Mm. Wow. So when you're doing a business pitch, like if someone's like you're at a networking event and they say, okay, great, you've got like 20 seconds to tell you 20 seconds, okay, go 40 seconds <laughs> or a minute to do your pitch. Is it worth putting in a story in that short time? Or is it worth just telling people what you do? I think that if you can do both, it's the most powerful option. So let's say if I've got 60 seconds, or 40 seconds and my options are hi i'm a life coach executive coach corporate trainer public speaker play advocate i've told you what i do but you may never remember what i've said in two three four five weeks time but if i was to say to you i help people craft magic into their lives by discovering and stepping into the destiny they were meant to have I haven't necessarily told you a direct story, but I've given no. you an analogy, which is story-esque. Statistically, yeah. that's going to resonate with someone who's going to go, yeah, I want a uh, hi, hi. Can I have some of what he's selling, please? But I want some of that magic dust. <laughs> exactly. Can I have the, ma where did the ma magic dust? <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I did a talk at a business event. I did a, um, a talk about growing up in South Africa and I never mentioned what I did for a living and there were 27 people in the room and I had over 80 extra hits on my website that day because people went to find out about me because they might not remember my name but they'll go what was her name again that girl who spoke about she was this she grew up in South Africa and uh, she spoke about a podcast and yeah 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 and then they went and had a look but I had so they must have passed that on to other people because they were inspired by the story yeah absolutely isn't that absolutely. interesting absolutely and that's why i love i love story i love but also by extrapolation play and creativity as well and so how do you how do you how do you bring play into that then i mean without being play i mean it's about being playful but how would you bring play into the business world 
for me, play is intrinsically part of who we are. Now, obviously, I'm not saying like, let's get out the Play-Doh five hours a day. I mean, that would be fun. I mean, actually, I am saying let's get out the Play-Doh. <laughs> Yeah, but, we'll delete that bit out. Yeah, yeah. get the Play-Doh out. Get the Play-Doh out. <laughs> but what a lot of adults do, and it's quite, a, it's a, it's an interesting thing. I don't know where this is written into what book that we all somehow subscribe to, but somewhere between 18 and 24, this switch gets flicked and something goes like this. Oh, I'm old. Uh, I can't have fun anymore. Can't play. Must be serious. Oh, I'm a grown up now and sweeping generalization incoming. Boys, we stop talking about feelings too. And so we shut down this part of us. So we are no longer 100%. And then we try and charge at 150%, weird. Mm. And then we beat ourselves up because we can't achieve what we're trying to achieve. And so when we reconnect with play, we are able to find that extra fuel that we need but also we are able to relax, recharge, and truly decompress. I love Lego. It's all over my world. <laughs> In fact, I didn't stop buying Lego. I bought more shelves. Like, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Oh, how fun. <laughs> that's amazing. But the power of Lego, for me, is the immersiveness of the play. So when you're building something, you are all in and your brain gets to do this and just breathe the number of times that people struggling with things go into an immersive type play thing i mean i literally have emergency lego i have small little <laughs> i have small little legos that are close at hand that if it all goes pear-shaped in my world and i'm feeling totally overwhelmed and the day is going and i'm just like ah, ah, i can't it's just too much i'll break out the lego play for 15 minutes and just stop, take a beat and reconnect with me and be kind to me. And at that point, I'm then able to re recalibrate the way I'm looking at everything in the world. And so businesses that bring in, obviously there's appropriate play for the workplace and <laughs> there's like laser tag across 17 offices. Obviously that's not happening right now. But the point is, when there can be fun, creativity, play, you're tapping into parts of your employees. You're tapping into parts of who you are that is dying to come out. And when people are allowed to do that, obviously appropriately and with the right amount of time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they are fully optimized. Mm. Who wouldn't want fully optimized staff? Yeah. Yeah, but it also you get to know people. I mean, I, yeah. I um, so I lived in a share house with um, uh, Esme Goldberg. So her husband Dennis Goldberg was in jail with Nelson Mandela, and when you went to meet Esme uh, to decide if she decided if you were allowed to move into this this commune in in London, she would say, "Come and sit down. Let's play a game of cards," and uh, she watched you when you were playing. So if you got completely over the top or, I mean, you didn't know that she was assessing you, but she was learning about you. She was trying to find out how you deal with life, how you deal with people um, in the card game. Mm. And um, if you beat her um, at the game, then she would call you anti-Semitic. <laughs> she was like, you must be anti-Semitic. Nobody beats me. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, it was it was really interesting to watch. And I know people who are really kind and calm and then they get onto a squash court and you go, oh, there's a demon there. <laughs> yes, I use Monopoly in conflict resolution training. Wow. You want to get people riled up, put them on a, on a road with three hotels and no money in the bank and watch them get <laughs> cranky. <laughs> and off to prison. No way! <laughs> and off you go. Actually, Do not pass go. Just it go. starts at the beginning. I want to be the car. No, I want to be the hat. Do they still have the hats and the cars? What do they uh, have now? Um, I think I've got a set which has got a hat, a car, a ball. But I just brought new different random objects in because people have their favorites. So it's like, you can be Chewbacca. You can be Han Solo. 
you can be Dobby. And so that's a, it's a fun and interesting way. But once again, play also teaches so, so much. Mm. You play mm. a ton of different board games, Monopoly, I'm a huge board game fan, so I play things like Settlers of Catan, Carcassonne, and a whole bunch of other different ones, including a fun random one called Pandemic. Um, really? What is that one about? Is it you about You literally are trying pandemic? to save the world from a pandemic. <gasps> oh, wow. That would it's be a, fun. But the fun thing is, it's a collaborative game, so it's you and your fellow players against the game. Ah, against the pandemic. So against the pandemic, which is quite fun. But you learn strategy, you learn all these different things through play. Communication gets taught through play. If you want to teach people sales and negotiation skills, things like Settlers of Catan, where you, I know that you need three sheep to win the game and I've got three sheep, but I also know that if I can get 17 rocks from you and I know you've got them, I can win before you can win. And all of a sudden negotiation tactics come out and so you play games, but actually we've done all of these different things. So play is so much more than just play. It's powerful, powerful stuff from a teaching perspective, from a freedom perspective, but also a way to learn things like not everybody wins all the time. Yeah, that's a shame. It is a bit of a- I don't play. like playing unless I'm gonna win. <laughs> I, when I was at school, they um, they would say, okay, so you can be either on um, the reserve for the first team um, and play in the second team. Um, which one would you like? Well, I'm not going to be playing the second team. I'd rather be reserved for the first team, actually. <laughs> Why would you want to play in the second team? I mean, don't be ridiculous. It's the first Honestly. team nothing. I'd rather be on the bench. Exactly. And that's a great, I mean, it's a, it's a significantly harder place to get injured as well. <laughs> that's a good point. That's probably, I actually know I do have messed up knees and everything else from sport, but yeah, yeah. Netball. Don't play too much netball. Um, no, it's not good. Although well, at good six point. foot three, apparently I'm quite like, it's a good height to play netball. Be easy. Are you six three? Are you? Yes. Oh, wow. It's funny when you see people online, they don't look the same height. Like I'm five, ten and a half. That's why I was a netballer. Nice, very good. Yeah, no, yeah. we're all of what, two foot three on screen? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, look how little I am. I can get even littler. <laughs> <laughs> look how big I am now. Um, so you've decided, you left, um, you, you've gone full time into this coaching and it's a really yeah. exciting time because I'm sure there are people now um, who are exploring other options in their lives and yes. maybe they've lost their their jobs they've lost lost their livelihood and they're just starting to explore what's out there for people who are feeling that at the moment what's what kind of advice could you give them because it's scary you know you've been you've, you've been thrown out of your job because of the pandemic and what now what's the first thing that people should consider besides panic yes i think the first thing to acknowledge is that we are human and feelings might make us feel like we can panic and sometimes you're allowed to and that's not to say like freak out and like tear down the street running with like <laughs> ah! sorry i've already done that <laughs> no, it was you um but be honest with yourself about where you're at some days you're not going to be able to be as industrious in terms of the search for either a new job or to start your own adventure and the first place to check out is the mirror because a lot of the time and i use the classic example of football here we have what we do and who we are mm. and sometimes our identity stops being in who we are and gets stuck in what we do so if I'm so-and-so the footballer, so -and -so, I play football, what did you do? Uh, football, football, football. I'm so-and-so the footballer. I'm so-and-so the, I, I don't know what I, I, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without, my, no, you are so-and-so, you play football. Mm. You are a son, a daughter, a brother, a sister, a wife, a husband, a father, a, and, and, and all of these things. But ultimately the first thing we are is us. Now, some of these things are, there's a blending so i can't stop being a son i am a son but i'm also rory 
And so as people start on their adventures, the first place I often get them to look at is here. Because once we've figured out us, the rest is the satellites. And the satellites need that symmetrical solid thing in the middle to, to satellite around. So we don't get lost again if we then drop that thing and then we put our identity here. So that's the first thing I always get people to think about is this guy or this girl. And after that, there are obvious practicalities like, you know, mortgages get paid. So sometimes you don't get to charge off and do the dream straight away. You sort of find the gateway by X pays the bills and this feeds the soul. Hmm. sometimes you are lucky and blessed and fortunate enough that you get to go straight into it because of what you want to pick and the availability of money in that space for people to pay you to do the thing or you've got to train and if you're going to train in something you need money to pay for that so you might need to find something else hmm. and so what i often say to my coaches is find the fuel and the fuel is the thing that you do to literally give you like fuel as in food and money and everything else. But it's the thing that you know is getting you to the destination. And goal setting is so important in that because once you've got goals that are achievable and or breakdownable, and I'll use, and I'll explain that in just a second, it makes it so much easier to achieve. So for example, if I wanted to run 10 Ks by the end of this year, uh -huh. by the end of March, I probably should have bought shoes. <laughs> but, or you could be so a bud. I could, but it's London and, and or the UK. Oh. And it's a bit chilly out there with them shoes off. Uh, That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but, and also I like, I would want a trail run. So I definitely would want to have shoes to cover me old feet if I'm jumping on sticks and rocks. But if I haven't bought shoes by the end of March, I've now only got nine months left and I'm kind of on sticky ground. So by the end of June, I then want to be able to walk 5Ks. Uh -huh. By the end of September, I want to be able to run 5Ks. And then by the end of December, I want to be able to achieve that extra 5K. So now I'm running 10Ks. And I think that what we often do, and this is absolutely rife at January, we go from zero to full throttle in the space of 12 hours because the date changes. <laughs> Now, next year, I'm going to do this. So that's tomorrow. Oh, dear. Um, and then we set ourselves up to fail. And so we don't try. Mm. And that's where being kind to yourself is the most important job you have. And then creating the goals that you can, like you say, break down into bits and pieces. So instead of saying, I'm going to do all of this this year, well, maybe you can break it down and say, well, these are the steps that I need to take. And I suppose also if you have to go for a job to pay the bills, what can you actively do in the evenings, on the weekends yeah. that will start paving that road and that path for you to start taking in the direction of your dreams? Absolutely. But also it's about understanding like what are your numbers really? And when I, when I ask that question, what I mean is, Let's say I have X lifestyle right now, but I don't need to have, okay, I'm just going to pick this random example. This is not something I do. Six Magnum ice creams a day. Oh, that would be nice. It would be lovely. <laughs> Although my personal trainer might have a word. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but if, if you're a I personal trainer, log off now. Yes. Uh, Daniel, if you're watching, please leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if I have a Magnum habit, that is a luxury mm. i could go down to two a day <laughs> I mean, I'm maybe giving, none i'm not giving it up completely come on people. <laughs> um but what that means is i've now got four magnums a day of not having to earn or mm. if i can get back to what i was earning that means i've got buffer savings that i can put into into my actual adventure and what that means is once you recalibrate your have to have to number build a buffer in that you you look for but you might not have to work 60 hours a week anymore 
you might be able to get back to a shock and horror 40 hour week, which then gives you the time to mm. invest into the thing. I did two jobs for about five and a half months full time as I was going scaling into this, which meant I was doing 70 hour weeks, which um, is quite a lot. And I was pretty tired, but it was a goal driven thing. I would not have been doing 70 hour weeks just because, hey, it's April and I feel like working 70 hour weeks this week. Like, But also if your goal is real and your goal really gets you and it really means something to you, then you won't lose sight of that and you will push yeah. yourself through a 70 hour week. Because if the goal is, oh, I just want to have a better job one day, then it's like, but I want to transform people's lives. I want to help people. I want to put yeah. people on the right journey. I want to make a difference in the world. And every time you feel a bit flat, you go, oh, no, 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 no. let me just reassess that goal of mine. Let me just, yeah. no, I need to push through the 70 hours. I need to make it, you know, whatever it is, whatever you have to push yourself through. Absolutely. And I think that's also where the experience in the performing arts is single-handedly one of the most powerful resilience creating machines that you can ever be involved in. Because when you're being rejected because you're too tall or your eyes are the wrong color, for the role or you speak with the wrong accent or you speak with the wrong accent <laughs> or you know you've got the world's best haircut now um well at least you don't have to worry about the hairdressers being closed true story although my beard man like oh yeah that's true you know hairy face problems um <laughs> but the thing is you get taught resilience like dialed up to 12 when you're in that sort of environment and I think that it's such a powerful lesson that people are relearning in, unfortunately, scary ways just due to what's going on. But there is such power in failing. Hmm. And I mean, tech talks about fail forward. I think John Maxwell wrote something about fail forward. Improv, my beautiful, beautiful improv teaches you to embrace a mistake as a gift because if I'm on stage and something goes wrong, we can't be like, eh, I'm leaving and just walk off. You've got to finish the scene. So you've got to embrace what's just been clearly not quite right and go, right, there's treasure here somewhere. Let's find it. And off yeah. we go and we rampage and all of a sudden, yes, we are definitely aliens at a laundromat because that makes total sense. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't. I haven't been to a laundromat for a long time. I'm going to go and find some aliens. Actually, in some parts of some neighbourhoods, I think there are aliens. <laughs> True story. Um, they get mesmerised by the turning of things. You see, that's how we catch them and put them in. Their that's crates. the. Um, that's the. Uh, um, what's the film? Um, oh man, with um, Tom Cruise and. Um, oh, um, I know exactly which one we're talking about. Oh little... come on. I know people are shouting at us now. Put it in um, the comments. Put it in the comments. Um, yeah. So, but it's just it, you know I think I think so that the 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 resilience thing is is interesting because when we're feeling really low, you can't believe that you can be resilient. Yes. <clears throat> but actually, there's a reason. Like we've got a puppy, and it's really easy to sleep late when you don't have a puppy. But when you have a puppy, no matter how tired, you have to get out of bed. It's like having a child. It's like having something that relies on you and you have to have to keep going yeah. so when you've got a goal that i have to keep going because this is it's it's in my dna that i have to make this happen then you bounce back from almost anything and pushing you back gives you the strength to go five steps forward absolutely and i think within that if you have a goal that you deeply care about whether or not it's intentional or not, people always end up with accountability on that. Mm -hmm. So if I want to buy the Lego Millennium Falcon this year, I do actually, it's a true story. Okay. There we I, go, accountability partner, you've got one. But here's the thing, I've, that's just like, that's a cool thing to do, but what have I done? I want to have 200 people in my membership area of my website before I do that. So I've now got a goal with a prize. Now, I could not tell anyone that and just buy them Lego Millennium Falcon next week and then get in trouble because the shelves aren't up. But that's a side note. Um, 
But the point is, when you make an accountability, you get a cheerleader and you get a helper. And it's their job not to beat you with your goal and beat you with your prize. And this is where I love coaching. It's my job at times to make sure people don't wimp on their dreams and believe enough for both of us. Hmm. And that sort of stuff where somebody's going, I can't, and you go, I believe you can. And if you don't believe you can, just trust me that you can. And let's take one more step today. And even if that step is standing back up again in our sort of chumba wumba moment and just getting back up because not getting back up like you quite correctly pointed out is when we fail yeah. getting knocked down not failing mm. staying down for a brief second and catching your breath not failing but when we truly give up and either stand up and walk backwards and like just pee i'm out or don't get back up. That is the only time that we can use the, the F word <laughs> about ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So what are your goals then besides buying this thingy for Lego? Um, thingy for Lego, clearly I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> I love how you your... invested in it. <laughs> So, tell, so you mentioned you mentioned uh, yeah that's I, I'm not invested in that goal at all. It's your goal anyway. That's the other thing. You know, you've got to have your own. You've got exactly. to have your own. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because be not personal. what other people want or expect from you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So you mentioned a membership. So tell us a bit about that. So I have just recently launched yesterday my new website. Uh, it's all live and rumbling in in the world again, which is excitable and. What I've come to realize is there are a lot of people that would like to dabble and understand what coaching is, but maybe are afraid to commit a lot of money to it. Mm. And so what I'm going to be doing is hopefully within the next two weeks, if all tech behaves, which is the final hurdle, launch my membership stuff, which is essentially coaching light. So it's an environment where people can pay a membership, be part of, and twice a week they'll get a post in there. Mondays will be motivational, sort of like rah rah. You can do this all for the week. And Thursdays will be thinking Thursdays, where it'll be a coaching-related question or a challenge set, or trying to help people find an epiphanum moment as a result of doing an exercise, which will then give them a sense of what it's all about and how this coaching thing works. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, have had experiences with snake oil salesmen. And the, the name coach can be misconstrued as sort of weirdo, charlatan, sangoma, nut job, hippie, <laughs> tie-dye guy. And or... No, like, no offense to tie-dye. I mean... <laughs> in any, I love me some tie-dye. Or like Tony Robbins, a bajillion pounds an hour. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's apparently nothing in between hi there is um <laughs> so so do you classify yourself between tony robbins and tie-dye yes basically <laughs> i like that i like that a lot we should get tony robbins wearing tie-dye and then see if that really messes with it <laughs> i love everything about that image um <laughs> So the idea really is to give people a sense of what coaching is all about and how it can move them forward in their lives, their businesses, their, um, yeah, their absolutely. environment. Absolutely. And also just get them happy to hang out with themselves as well. And I think that for me is, is always the first part of any journey. It's, it's, as I said earlier, it's about starting with that person in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And I mean, every coach has got their own backpack analogy. I call mine deturtling. And it's a, we start with the deturtling and we move on from there once we've figured out what we need to be carrying. Because, and this is the fun and interesting and weird bit about us being human beings. So if we don't do something right, we, we play this little spiral. We beat ourselves up. And then we beat ourselves up for beating ourselves up. But wait, if you buy now, we then feel guilty for mm. beating ourselves up for beating ourselves up so of course what do we do we beat ourselves up for feeling <laughs> guilty about beating 
and then we go like this. How do you know this much about me? That's This is a bit weird to have cameras in my house. I'm very good. It's, it's because you see, I'm the tie-dye Tony Robbins. And so... <laughs> I need you to put on a sarong of tie dye and put that on your website. I dare I will, you. I will figure something out. <laughs> um, maybe for summer. Um, <laughs> when it's slightly warmer. Leg warmers. <laughs> Absolutely, but I think that's the thing. We we go into this weird self-deprecating, beat ourselves up, and let's be honest. As human beings, we are all card-carrying members of the Beat Yourself Up Club. Oh, so agree. And it's not about revoking your membership because that is impossible because we are not androids. But what it is about is understanding what is going on and what to do to prevent you doing that to yourself. Mm. No matter mm. what's going on, and if I can leave anyone with any nugget from today, being kind to yourself is the most powerful thing you can do. And in those moments where you are in the beat yourself up cycle, I talk about it all the time on, on LinkedIn, hashtag take a beat, just stop and just stop <laughs> and just be kind to yourself for five minutes. If the impact will be way more than the five minutes. Absolutely. Like, I yeah. cannot express enough how powerful five minutes of being kind to yourself can be. Mm, that's amazing. It's very powerful. It's incredibly powerful. But we, we just need to train ourselves sometimes to, make, to bring that habit into our lives because it's not easy for some people. Actually, 99.99 .99 recurring of us find that very difficult to do. Uh, when we're up against deadlines or we you know we're tired and you know it's really hard um Absolutely. okay so let's let's so how do people get hold of you um rory so i love the name of your website <laughs> so my website is roaringberry.com because it's a massive departure from my name it took me ages <laughs> to figure that out um <laughs> And I've got my, my contact form off there. Uh, you can always hit me up by email, brainjam at roaringberry.com because I'm always up for a brain jam. And people always ask me, but what's that all about? For me, when you think about artists when they jam, they just create magic by hanging out and just goofing. I think that when two brains hang out, you can have magic created as a result. And that's why I like brain jam. Absolutely, that's fantastic. So, yeah, so my website is obviously new and excitable. I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. And so people can absolutely connect with me there. I'd love to have them. I have a Facebook page as well. And then of course there's the Roaring Tales, which is my newsletter that they can sign up for as well. Fantastic. Well, it has been so lovely to chat to you. I feel like you're just sitting here in my living room with me. That's weird. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um thanks so much for joining us and um yeah i just um i think you're doing amazing stuff and i love i love your energy and i know that um whether you're on a screen or not um your energy comes out it just oozes and i think that's what when people are looking for a coach or they're looking for someone just to help them a little bit to the next level or whatever it is they're struggling with they find the the coach that appeals to them the energy that appeals to them and i think um yeah, I think people can relate to your energy because we love being happy and positive. You know, it's just, an, it, it is our default, but we force ourselves in all sorts of other places to not be happy and stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, have a lovely evening and weekend and I'm sure uh, we will chat very soon. So thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, everyone be kind to yourselves because you're awesome and you deserve it. Oh, that's such a lovely message for a Friday night. See you later. Bye-bye.